Right, welcome to the Vintage Audio Workshop. Got a nice little unit here to look at. It's a germanium transistor, microphone amplifier and mixing circuit by Pi. And this one was built around 1964 period and used in a great many recording studios of the time. I found this on a car boot sale in 1996 in the Abbey Mills market and I was told it came from the BBC recording studios. I have no reason to doubt them, having seen all their camera equipment and everything else that came out. You've got input transformers and output transformers, an option of 30 ohms, 200 or 600. This particular one had 600 ohm transformers for the inputs, all four of them. Germanium transistors, OC24s, and a very nice unit. It was working when I got it. I found it for £20. Got the circuit diagram. We've redrawn all the circuit diagram out and proof checked it. Everything is all fine and uh, it's now been sold, but there is a lot to talk about with it. We're going to now go over to the service technician. He's going to take you through. Okay, now this is a 1960s Pi mixer. Very early. Germanium transistors. Uh, it's quite a mixture of different brands of transistor, but nevertheless we'll go through it. Each of the channels consists of one transistor. That's it. A transformer, a transistor, with feedback there. That's a shunt, that's the feedback. There's very little feedback, that's quite high, that's quite low. So the amount of feedback is low, you're trying to get as much as we can from this one section. Each of these sections is complete up to this point here, including this input filter here to decouple it from the others, which is a, just a resistor and a capacitor decoupling the feed to this transistor here. The, trans the transformers here are quite nice. They are all sealed up and so on. Uh, quite beautifully done. Then we have the transistor here, which is uh, the next gain structure. It's got automatic bias there. There's the output. The feedback is that one transistor, that one resistor there. That's about it, um, and that is fed into as well as the four channels by this oscillator here. This oscillator sets our output level, and uh, it used to calibrate the meter and send tone down a line. The main gain is here. There's an auxiliary input there, and then we have then a. Uh, this is the amplifier after the main gain. A phase splitter, these two transistors, called a long tail pair. It's fed into there. That side is a set, uh, earth point, essentially, because of the capacitor there. The output is coupled into these two transistors, which, are, which is a push-pull circuitry, which is balanced by the output transformer there. These are quite big. They're OC24s, which were quite a big device at the time. And this drives the output. Essentially, it's very uh, very simple. If we come down here, this is the input for the peak program meter. Now, being a broadcast unit, it has a very complex peak program meter because it has to meet broadcast specifications. This is the input transistor here. This sets the sensitivity for the PPM. You set the tone here uh, on this. This is set up so that your output is uh, zero dBU. Uh, there, that is fed back down here from the secondary output here to this sensitivity pot. That's the first amplifier. Feedback is via that resistor to stabilize the gain here. This feeds this transformer with a full wave rectifier there, which has got a balanced pot there. The output of this balanced output here, which is not rectified, is fed via this transformer here, down here to this amplifier, which is an integrated amplifier. This transistor here sets the rectified but not integrated signal through there, which gives you the range control. These transistors here are an amplifier with a full, full range rectifier there as well, and an integration capacitor. At that point, this sets the attack time on this resistor here, and the decay time is set by that capacitor. That is then amplified mixed with that that comes through and that drives the meter there. The meter is a right hand zero and you set the zero with a standing current through it. There. Okay, if we come here, this is the input to the PPM circuit. This is the first amplifier which drives the first of two transformers and a complex circuitry here so that the PPM will indicate a truly logarithmic curve. 
it's a broadcast quality piece of equipment and the broadcast people were very insistent that the PPMs be accurate. This is the reality of it. Input transformers are here. These are some sort of Pi transformer. And uh, as soon as I can get one out, there we go. Glass sealed, octal bases. Very good quality transformer. Um, certainly up to broadcast standards. Um, the output level controls are there, there and there and there. These are hot moulded carbon controls. The circuitry is all here, but you can't see the transistors until you turn over to here. Here we are, the transistors, which are not the 2G309s of the circuit, but someone has replaced them for the obviously newly, new-fashioned RCA 2613s. A device I've never actually heard of before, but it's almost certainly still a germanium transistor. There, as you can see, the coupling capacitors from the transformer there into the base of the RCA, and there's the output capacitor going to the fader underneath. The mixed transistor is this device here, which appears to be another one of these nice RCA devices. So presumably they were getting quite a lot of gain out of them. The main output transistors are there and there. So as you can see, these are quite large devices. This is an earth bus here. As we use a minus 12 volt rail, the earthing is in red. These are the decoupling capacitors for the four mic amps there. This section here is all to do with the PPM. Balance, the rectifier balance, and those are the rectifiers. The range, the attack, and the law controls are all there. And as you can see on this nice little hinge panel here, which is beautifully made, I might point out, they're all good, quite good quality, good quality pots here. Most of these electrolytics are, have seen better days, and some of them are bulging and not very nice. And we, when we measured them last week, a lot of them were less than satisfactory, shall we say. Here is the oscillator. There's a set level and set stability control, and here's the transistor that runs it. I have noticed that uh, although the circuit diagram said they're all 2G309s, here they're all RCA devices. Obviously a new device had come in and they made them that way. Under here, again, these are the two transformers in the PPM. Uh, along with the PPM circuitry here, and there's all the wiring up, taking them in, taking it in there. As we turn it over again, this here is the output transformer. You can see they weren't messing around. This is a seriously big transformer. It looks very heavy as well. In the front here, we have the PPM, which looks to me like an Ernest Turner movement. It may be something that Pi have dreamt up, but I think it's Ernest Turner. It's got a right-hand zero, as you can see. It indicates zero there when it's actually powered up. So you can never overload it because you can never put more than zero volts into it. And it's uh, set there. It's a very clever way of making sure the meter doesn't get damaged. Here you have a power supply. We'll just take the top off that so you can see the insides. This is actually a pluggable power supply and uh, supplies 24 volts. There's a mains transformer, the smoothing capacitors, they've got decoupling between them, and then you've got choke inputs, there's two chokes there and one below. The down right underneath are the diodes, and there's all the input bits and pieces. Mains input is on a four pin EP connector, which is quite rare now. The entire thing screws out here on the McMurdo Red Range connector. The male part is in the unit there and they've even made a little window in the side so you can get to the transformer. There's the two rectifiers and as you can see the two inductors there. These inductors are choke input which gives you very good regulation after you set the uh, basic current. Very simple. This would have been replaceable with a battery pack originally or Alternative power supplies, I suppose, for different devices. Maybe a 400 volt power supply for use in other circumstances. As you can see, a very compact and nice mixer. And what I particularly like is good thick quality boards, beautifully made, no printed wiring. 
this is all point to point wiring with pins stuck through. I would imagine these things hardly ever go wrong. More details about construction here. These are devices, these are new market transistors, quite obscure devices. I don't think the company exists it for a long time. One, two, three, four, five devices there. Then we have uh, a Mullard device. I don't even know what that one is. VT18, and this is an old GEC device. Um, they were quite common for a while. 2G, GET106, which is another germanium. Everything is germanium. This was made prior to the invention of silicon transistors. 1964. Yeah, about 1964 or thereabouts. The only other thing here is how the thing is operated. The is this meter select is the, it combined with the on-off switch. It's off, measuring the voltage. Program level is displayed on there. Switching an oscillator on there and calibrating the meter is there. And you calibrate the meter on meter sensitivity there.